Hi everyone, welcome back to my uh, to Houdini conversion course. Um, we're in part two, particle examples section C. I've broken these videos down plainly because I've spent a lot of time recording these and Cam Studio not saving because I went over its time limit. So um, that's why I wanted the sixth video of this series. So let's pick up from where we left off. Um, so we've got particles falling down and I am going to show you how to add a collision to those. I'll try to instant some geometry onto it and hopefully uh, if time permits we'll uh, color those as well. So to create a collision right click on here and type in collision. And there you have a collision node and if I hit there actually nothing is going to happen because I haven't specified anything for it to collide with. So let's jump up one level. So I have my sphere plugged into the first context. So I'm going to create something called a grid. And I will plug that into the second context. I'm going to just hit this second flag is a template flag so I can kind of see where I am. Uh, I want to drop that l down. So I'm going to tr transform. I'm not I'm going to show you something put the transform in there and then I'm going to transform it down in the Y and you notice it hasn't moved. The reason is I've got my template flag on the grid. If I move my template flag down to the transform you'll see where our collision will occur. So let's jump back into our pop net and hit play and again you'll see nothing happened at all. Okay, reason being I haven't specified what it's supposed to collide with. So you'll remember when I sourced, I went into my um, geometry source and selected my first context geometry, So, which was the thing plugged into there. Now I've plugged my transform of my grid into a second. If I go into collisions, I can go into here and choose my second context geometry. And there now displays the second context geometry which is the grid. Now if I hit play, you'll see any time a particle hits the grid, it dies. Okay? The reason it dies is because under behavior, I've got it to die on collision. I set that to bounce on collision and hit play. Now particles will hit there and bounce back up and continue bouncing until they, they uh, diverge and no longer hit the grid. Obviously, I can change all of these values so they will uh, bounce in a different way. So that's changing the normal. If I just put that to a different value, you can see how the bounce is smaller. Okay, I want to stop on collision. They will just hit and stick to where they land, which is kind of nice as well. Um, stick will get them to stick. So the other one will stop. So that basically sticks there. So if I was rotating these geometries it wouldn't slide off, it would stick. Slide on collision, get them to hit and then they just slide offwards and slow down. Okay, so that's how you can get. I'm going to just stick it to bounce and I'm going to set these quite low so they don't go nuts and they eventually will slow down. Okay, so there they'll bounce and then they'll stop bouncing. They'll keep jittering for a while. So I'll just set it to. Um, the great thing about it is you can always just come back and, um, and change it later. So just get them to stick for the time being. Um, so the uh, next thing I want to show you is those are nice, you get nice little particle dots, points, but what if you want to change that point to something more interesting? Um, maybe a sphere. So where would you plug a sphere in to actually um, plug into those particles to instance them the same way you would instance in, um, in Maya? So what we're going to do is we'll create a sphere 
and just have a look at that sphere. So it's quite a big sphere. I'm just going to take it the radius down to something a bit smaller. Now what I want to do is I want to take the output of a particle system and the sphere and I want to copy them. So I'll use a copy node and drop it there. And if I mouse over that, it that says primitives to copy and that says template copy too. So the primitive I want to copy is a sphere and I want to copy it to the output of that pop net. If I stick my flag there, I suddenly get a bunch of spheres falling down and they're going to just sit on top of each other. The reason being that these spheres aren't, that these are just instance geometry. So they're not actually going to do anything. It's just, so they're not actually going to collide unless we set that up. Um, so there you have a bunch of spheres falling out. If I want to actually see where they come from, I can either template that so we can see where they've come from. Turn that template off. I'm really more interested in seeing the grid where they, they'll actually crash. So I'll drop in a, a merge node and I'll drop the copy into there. And I'll take the output of my X form one and drop it into there. So now I can see the ground on which they're colliding with and crash. So that is basically how you can, ex I've explained a concept here that now I, I, this is going into that node and you can send it to two nodes. You can merge, you can copy back in there. Let's just quickly add some color onto these. So if I right click on here and type in color, which is spelled C-O-L-O-R, um, the, uh, the American way. So if I put my color node on there, I can choose a color. To break a connection, by the way, just right click and do delete channels, not a connection. If you want to delete the channels, you can add your own colors in. So now everything is white. If I want my colors to change over time, I click in a ramp and in here, I can just, same way in Maya, you could change your colors. You can just change your colors in there. So if I want them to go from red to green, for instance, I'll just set them up like that. Oop, didn't get it. So I set that to the saturation up on it. Click off. And they're, they're not going to change because the lifespan of these is really long. So I'll show you where to set the lifespan. The lifespan is set in the actual source. If you go into birth, it says life expectancy and life variance. So this is like your lifespan PP. So uh, we so that's essentially going to live forever. Let's just, um, that is measured in what in seconds. So that's a hundred seconds times twenty four. Where you can check your frame rate is click on uh, this button and it will give you frames. So you can see it's 24 frames per second. If you want to change the end point, you can set it in there. Uh, hit apply and it will ask me now, do I want to stretch my channels? Because I've changed my, my playback range and I've got keyframes in there, it's asking me, do I want to change where my keyframes are based on the extra frames so it could stretch around. I'm going to click no because I don't want to do that. I'm just demonstrating it, how you can change the frame rate uh, and change the, the playback range. Um, so I'm going to set these to 11 seconds, say. So that's, just say 12. That will get me to write, oops, not 112, just 12. And I'm going to set a s variance up of uh, maybe 4. So now we'll actually see those particles change color as we go through the timeline. And they'll change to green as we get to the end. So that is basically um, creating particles uh, adding gravity, adding collision, changing their colors, and then jumping back up, adding. So if you want, you can add something else. You could maybe add a box. 
if you want to see how they look as boxes, drop that onto there and it'll all change to boxes. Just size it down. Obviously, you could use a transform if you want. Um, you can uh, do whatever you like from there. Just you can kind of see them all rotating around as well. Um, I'm going to call the lesson there. Uh, time's going to run out on my cam studio and I'll get locked out again. So I kind of hope you've seen, I've, I, I don't want to dive into Houdini too much, I kind of hope you've seen how you can uh, take whatever you want to do in Maya, where the equivalent lives in Houdini, how you'll be able to navigate yourself around much more comfortably, how you'll be able to troubleshoot basic problems like not seeing everything because your flags are in different places and um yeah lots of if you've got any suggestions that you'd like to see leave some comments below tell me what you'd like to see in the next videos i'm planning to um hopefully record a set of videos that will deal with lighting fairly soon actually while i think i still have a couple of minutes left i'm just going to show you how to play blast this okay because this is quite cool um I'm just going to plug my spheres back in. So to play Blast, if you want to, uh, it's actually called Flipbook. You can Flipbook here, uh, that's to render. So if I right click, if I just click there, I get my flip Flipbook settings. And this is just, IP means it's, it's not going to save it, it's just going to keep it in the memory. Uh, that's the start frame, that's the end frame, that's by frames. Um, so by step size essentially one and um, you can use the viewport sizings you can change your quality if you want to add motion blur just turn that on yeah i know you can motion blur in a flipbook that's very cool you can add depth of field stuff from cameras if you had if i had that installed uh, you can change the size the resolution whatever you want so i'm just going to keep it at the basics because i want to show you what plays a flip book so by hitting play or by hitting flip book it's going to open up the flip book there it is and it's this called um m play which is a very powerful flip book i think from what i've actually read cam studio and flip book do not like each other so much so okay but it's just going to drag it off so Flipbook is very cool. It's uh, <laughs> a lot more advanced than Mplay. If you want to change your settings, your your output settings, you can just do that here, and it will change the timeline. And it will only play 100 frames if that's what you want. You can hit here. So this will loop it. This will zigzag. So this will go backwards and forwards. So when it gets to the end, it will bounce back. And you can view things in reverse and f you can what's the other one play it just once if that's what you want change the frame rate if you want to save that whole sequence you go to file and you go save sequence as and then you write it out and if you want to write it i usually use a dollar f so if i want to call it untitled dot frame dot pick uh pick is the uh inbuilt version you can change it to tiffs JPEGs, uh, targets, whatever you want to output it at. Uh, you can put various uh, comments in there. Um, if you want to disconnect, so it's if I wanted to flip book again with new settings, it would overwrite this. If I hit um, disconnect or hit that button, let's just do that for the sake of it. If I hit that button, that will take that out of commission and I can create a new flipbook with my boxes plugged in and then I could compare the two directly in two separate players. Um, so that's that. I'm going to call it there because I think the, uh, the cam studio is about to cut me off and then I would have lost everything, which I've done over the past few nights. Um, drop me some comments. I'm going to... Oh, let me just show you. If you want to save it, you need to actually, it's not the same as Maya, you need to create a folder and 
it, it doesn't do the same things that Maya does. It doesn't create a whole folder. So you need to go in and manually create a new folder and then subfolders and so on and label it yourself. What I tend to do is I tend to drop it into um, my actual Maya, Maya folder. So in here, I've created a my to Dini conversion course and then I'll sh I should really just create a new folder. In fact what I'll do is I'll save this whole file and um, Maya to Houdini setup and then if you want this I'll share it on my website um, below as well. Okay, um, thanks for watching. Um, please, I'm going to perhaps generate some new courses fairly soon. This was just a very basic primer just to show you how things work. I'll go through, hopefully, shortly and create some lighting setups, do some more advanced particle work, do some fluid work so you can see uh, in more depth how things work between mine and Houdini. This was just to get you started so you can... Uh, go on and use the various Houdini tutorials that are out there and make the most of them. Please visit my blog www.digitopiafilm.com and um, leave some comments, have a look around, lots of lots of great content in there. Um, check out my book as well if you haven't already, if you want to learn even more about CG and VFX. I'll see you guys hopefully very soon, share the video, leave me some comments. And I hope you all found it useful. Thanks so much. Bye.